Right, happy to see everyone here. Um, good morning, I'm waking up. Um, and this is uh, SLT Low 4, the final lecture of the Low Road. Uh, let me emphasize that this is the Low Road. The, the reason I want to emphasize that is, is because you're gonna see a lot of integrals and, uh, and, 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 and I do invite you to, to, to follow along. This is the proof sketch um, of the free energy, free energy formula, the formula that we are, um, we are basing a lot of our intuition on. Um, it's, it's not just a formula, the derivation sort of tells us why, uh, why we care about it so much and what features of it leads to, particularly the first couple of terms, right? Leads to the RLCT, why uh, this is where we see geometry um, shows up. Okay, so, so that's, the, the, that's the free energy formula um, that we are going to um, uh, try to prove today. Um, I'm going to do a very quick recap of, the, of last SLT uh, low two. Um, the reason being uh, that today is a lot of calculations, right? Um, and the last lecture was why we are doing these cal calculations, what's the intuition behind them, and uh, recapping some of that will make, make, make a lot of the integrals less inscrutable, okay? So last time we study, uh, we said that we are going to study the model by studying the Bayesian posterior. The, the, the point is not uh, the fact that, that the point is not about Bayesian posterior, the point is about the model itself, where, uh, where the prob probability mass are, what's the effect of geometry, uh, uh, what's the effect of various kinds of geometry as we'll see. And we have introduced this um, very important uh, object. And throughout the week, I think you, uh, you, you are probably sufficiently convinced that these are uh, very important objects. Um, there's the partition function, the, uh, it's variously known as the marginal likelihood, uh, the evidence, the model evidence, et cetera. And as we know, uh, things with lots of names are important. Um, and Fn is the uh, free energy, the thing that we want to um, um, analyze today. Ln of W was the negative log likelihood. Um, it's the likelihood function over the entire data set uh, taken a negative log of. It's the, it's the energy. It's, uh, it's the, the thing that tells you um, uh, whether or not a parameter is a good solution or not. And L is uh, the, the average version of it which captures the geometry without uh, the stochastic effects, right? So last time we also um, normalized these quantities um, uh, and discussed, on, so last lecture, we only discussed the geometric effects, right? This was the integral that we we're doing, okay? I think there was a typo um, with a bar on top, right? <laughs> it's, it's the integral where we, where we so the thing inside here was the, the Boltzmann weight or the posterior weight, posterior without the normalization, without the, uh, without the marginal likelihood, right? But that's not quite a posterior because we replace um, K, uh, Kn with K um, so that we don't need to worry about a stochastic effect yet. And, and all the geometric effect, as you will see, is contained within this K function. And and that was, we, we, did, we did a bunch of integrals like this last time. And we saw that um, when, we, when we did this, we, we get um, asymptotic, the first uh, few leading order terms looks like, well, there's the energy term. Uh, uh, so um, K of W is equal to uh, L of W minus its optimum parameter, W naught is optimum parameter. So that's, that's just a way to normalize things. Um, and there's an energy term, that's the leading order term. And then there's this RLCT term, the lambda term. Um, and then at, at the end, we'll also see this uh, multiplicity term, okay? Um, so that was the transformation we did last time. We, we, we normalize so that we can uh, compare things to the truth um, for the theoretical discussion um, so that we don't need, to, don't need to talk about optimum, but we talk about zeros. And that's where algebraic geometry comes in. And then we, uh, remove going down, we remove uh, the effects of um, stochasticity. Okay, so that this 
we, we go through sort of an intuition building exercise. We, we start from regular model. Um, and just to uh, reiterate the definition, a, a, a regular model is a model that is identifiable. So there is no difference in talking about a parameter and the distribution inside the model. They are the same, one and the same, right? Um, it, it, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between them. And there's everywhere non-degenerate information matrix. Uh, and, and, and the model have everywhere non-degenerate official uh, information metrics. Uh, let, me, let me flash a slide. This, this was a slide I posted in uh, the Discord, Discord because uh, last time I really didn't explain what official information matrix, um, the intuition behind it, what's the connection be, uh, to, to um, the KL divergence. So this is a derivation of the, the relationship uh, at, uh, with some nuance, right? Um, the, the, the fact that the KL divergence is related to the curvature of the KL divergence um, uh, locally. And, uh, and, and that, that should give you some uh, intuition about how uh, the Fisher information matrix and the KL divergence define some sort of Riemannian metric allows you to talk about volumes and things like that for regular model, right? All of that is only true if these matrices are non-degenerate, right? Um, so I'm not going to repeat that, but um, just uh, letting you, you can look at it in the slides, okay? Okay, so we we found that if we do um, if we do a if if um, if our model are, is is regular near near the unique global minima, it looks like a parabolic ball, right? It's it's W square. So this is what KW look like. This is what the Boltzmann weight looked like. So this is e to the negative n kW, and think of n as um, as as going as going re really really high. It gets more and more concentrated, but it always looks like it's it's always Gaussian, right? The posterior converge to Gaussian, and a lot of other things converge to Gaussian. The MLE converge to Gaussian, uh, the the maximum likelihood estimate, uh, the distribution of it converge to Gaussian, as we've seen in SLT load one. Um, the the maximum a posterior the MAP estimator has a Gaussian distribution, et cetera. Things are, things are as nice as it could be, right? And um, just sort of um, uh, continuing, continuing on the theme of, um, of Dan's talk on catastrophe and Jesse talks on dynamics, um, just again to emphasize that, yes, we are talking about free energy, Bayesian posterior, et cetera, but um, the geometry has profound um, geometric effect as well. So this is the case um, in in regular model where where the functions that we are dealing with are Morse function. Uh, that means that all the critical points and the, the, the most important critical point is the global minima that we are uh, of, of k. Um, all that all those all those critical points are non-degenerate, meaning they have non-degenerate hessian, right? And uh, this uh, let me explain this a little bit. This is a this is a picture. So uh, I, I, I stole this from, from this website. Um, this is a picture where the dots, um, the, the, the one dimensional dots are on the upper left corner there are critical points. Um, I, the blue are minima, so coal, uh, and the reds are maxima, so hot, <laughs> and the greens are saddle points. So this is a, this is a, um, uh, 2D, think of it as this, right? This function, and uh, and once you know where the just just like um, uh, what Jesse and Dan mentioned, if you know where all the crit uh, crit critical points are, you know you you almost pin down completely pin down your dynamics, right? If if you start from anywhere, if you are from a maxima, and then you 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 start in some direction, you kind of know where you're going, right? Um, Okay, so uh, critical points. Um, this is a very, very simple geometry in which um, the, the geometry around a, a critical point, the critical point itself is a point, and the geometry around it is uh, quadratic. Okay, um, and, then, and, then, um, and then we go to level two, which is minimally singular. I want to emphasize, as I did not last time, that this is more of uh, intuition building uh, what's, what's this term, intuition pump? Is that a thing? Um, intuition building exercise. In the grand scheme of things, this is not uh, 
important, but it's a good, uh, good way to illustrate various kinds of degeneracy, right? So regular case, no degeneracy, right? Hessian, uh, non-degenerate, everywhere. Well, at a global minimum. Global minimum. Um, but here, one kind of degeneracy is that <clears throat> your, the, the, the set of true solution, the set of optimal solution, forms a smooth submanifold. Uh, that, that, that translates to that translates to saying there are three parameters in your uh, in your model, right? So there, there, there are parameters that don't really matter. That is one kind of degeneracy um, uh, that is easy to handle. And in fact, uh, 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 lots of times when people uh, talk about uh, realize that their model are, uh, is non-identifiable, non you would check whether or not it is this case so that you can um, so that you can fix all the tools you have. So previously, Laplace approximation give you the asymptotic expansion. Here, you can still fix Laplace approximation. And the, the way you fix it is by, um, by noticing that, well, the, the direction tangential to, to so if, if there are direction in which you can, you can, uh, you can walk, and not change your uh, model, you can just um, caution now and only think about uh, direction that, 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 that is normal uh, to that, uh, uh, to that, to that submanifold, right? Uh, and then you apply all your regular theory to the normal direction. However, I, there is a typo, typo, typo last time. You need to be non-degenerate in that normal direction as well, right? I, I quote, so it's called, uh, this is part of the more spot lemma. I forget that condition, which is the, the, the most critical condition that you can only uh, apply uh, the, the regular um, theory to the normal direction um, if you are, if your Hessian in those directions are non-degenerate, okay? In that case, we found that our free energy expansion um, looks like um, this lambda, um, looks like um, instead of d on two parameter count on two, it's um, non-free parameter count on two, right? It's a co-dimension of uh, of of the of the zero of the zero set of k, right? In so in this one, uh, I, that's the that's w zero. So um, so it's so if you look at look at it sideways, it is. Ah, it is that it is that that double well that we have seen so many times this week, right? Okay, and it is quadratic in in each of those wells in the in the sort of R um, radio coordinate. Okay, and then um, and then we in the last um, part we relax everything, right? That we we don't we don't assume. We don't assume that we, like in the regular points, we only have one unique global, min global minima. We don't assume that it is a smooth, uh, smooth manifold. So for, in, for example, in this case, W0 looks like that. There is a obvious non-smooth point there. In this case, uh, Laplace approximation doesn't, doesn't apply, straight up doesn't apply, N no fixes. And the free energy formula, we calculate one example last time, is given by uh, lambda on two, where lambda is now the RLCT, right? The, the, the geometric quantities. And I also want to emphasize that um, the, the type of gener degeneracy, so we, we saw uh, degeneracy in, in, in the sense of free parameter, but that, that critical typo I was talking about, that we, you also need to be non-degenerate in the normal direction means that there are, that there are other types of degeneracy other than some places, some parameter being, being free. And um, this, we saw this example, which is W to the four. Um, and you can see that this is very much uh, not Gaussian, even in the limit when N is uh, very, very large. It's very flat up here. And, um, and, and so this is, this, is, this, is, this is in one dimension. So there is, so there's no cross um, pictures in one dimension, right? This is uh, this is another kind of degeneracy, and um, this experiment here shows. I wanted to, I wanted to show that degeneracy, this kind of degeneracy, shows up in experiment, 
right? It is um, so. This is a this is a this is a stupid regression model. It's a dub, uh, one parameter. The parameter is w squared. So instead of y equal to w x, this linear regression, I I make it w squared x, so that the 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 k function looks like um, w to the four instead of w squared. Right, and then if you go ahead and, and sample this and sample the posterior, this is what the posterior look like. So the the, the, the histogram are posterior samples, and uh, the the red uh, line is the best fitting Gaussian. It doesn't fit, right? Um, and you can try this for multiple uh, different seed. You will you will find you will find that uh, not only does Gaussian not fit, um, the, the the shape near near this point uh, fluctuate a lot. Um, and even if your, um, the, this, is, this is with true parameter w not equal to zero, this is with w not the true parameter being 0 0.01, I think that, that black, black line. So even, even if you are just close to the singular set, you will, uh, you, you will still feel this, um, the effects of the singularity. Um, just like in the MOS, uh, just just like just no, 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 not just MOS, like the, the, the critical point um, is the thing that determines behavior. <clears throat> Recap and and question. <laughs> um, why the bimodality? Uh, this this is well. This is a non-identifiable model, right? W equal to negative one and W equal to one encodes the same thing because square to one, right? So so um, uh, so if if my data is actually generated from negative one, then I would so negative one is all the way out here. Then the the the, the likelihood will look like um, that and that, right? And one here. Right, mm -hmm. because both both places um, is uh, encode the neighborhood of both places are, 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 are the same, right? So so in that case, we actually degenerate down. That that is the case. That is that is kind of this case, mm -hmm. right? Where where uh, where sure your w zero is not a single point, but near every point in w zero, near every point in your true parameter set. It's it's a your you are Gaussian, mm -hmm. right? So if you if you go back go back up, um, if it is I, uh, I think it will become something like, okay, I can't do do that immediately. But um, but this if if your true parameter is negative one, then your 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 likelihood is is the famous double well mm -hmm. again. Okay. So just to clarify then, um, well, I mean, at a first glance. I would have thought that the right hand ones should look like the bottom left one. So in the right hand ones, are you saying that um, K of W is W to the four minus like one or minus 0 0.01 that you've got? Yeah, I, there? I didn't really. So it's, it's, not, it's not quite just W to the four minus W zero or W, w minus W zero to the four, right? It's not, not quite that. Mm -hmm. that, that, so the fact if you are away from the, that zero, the, the, the singular point, then you're, you, you, you introduce lower order terms. Yes. Lower order terms. Yeah. So, um, so how come the bottom left, or how come the two right this ones one. is not looking like the bottom left? Oh, um, oh, 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 this, sorry, this one, this one will look like the bottom left one. In the really large n limit, sorry, uh, in the mm. um, in the large n limit, and if I MCMC sample enough, mm -hmm. right. yeah. So, so this is this is uh, you can you can imagine, right? This the okay. This my I might as well say this because it's a good example of what we are doing today. Before we are talking about k of w, this is plotting k of w, right? This is so this is plotting e to the negative n k w. And this here is plotting e to the negative n k n of w, where it depends on the data. So if my data is just a tiny bit not like the, the mean of that data is just a tiny bit not at that point, yep. then I get by my right? right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you.
so in, in the limit when n is really really large then kn uh, we, this is what we're going to study today, which is um, how 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 does Kn uh, converge to W and whether or not it fluctuates. How how much does it fluctuate in the large end limit, right? So um, in the large end limit, you will see this 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 the you will still this by see, see this bimodal thing because it will never be exactly that, but this scale should should start contracting. Right. So so you will see something like yeah like that. Uh, other questions? Okay. So isn't W zero now the prime? What's the assumption you got rid of the log log prime? Uh, uh, can you say that again? Something about W zero? Is, isn't W zero always about analytic variety? What's the assumption you got rid of the log log term? I didn't get rid of the log log term. Oh, did I just not put it in the slides? Yep, yep. That's a uh, uh, so that's that's all the log n or little o log n. Thank you. There's a log log n there. Yeah. So it's just, it's just last time, uh, last time. Oh, actually, last time we do have um, a log log n. So. Sorry, Piper, good catch. Right. So w zero is an analytic variety if k of w is an analytic function. Uh, but so, um, I mean, if, right, you, and we will discuss if we have time, um, how to relax that assumption. Okay, this is what we're doing today. We are going to climb. So we were here, we were here, we did that kind of rush a little bit last time, but no matter, because we are going to do the more, more general thing. We're going to climb up this um, this ladder of increasing sophistication until we get to the full free energy formula, right? Um, if we don't have time, I'm hoping that we we get here. Um, it's enough to illustrate all the main features, um, or at least here. Okay, here's Watanabe's uh, famous artwork. Okay, so um, this. The that artwork is kind of the strategy, right, of SLT. You um, and it is based. Um, I'm not saying that's the a, 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 a main part of it is based on this observation here. So we have a partition function that that e to the negative n k of w um, integral that we want to do. We notice that it is. The Laplace transform of something we call the density of states function. And we notice that that density of states may link transform to something that we call the zeta function. Um, okay, this is me writing the definition. I didn't actually have that. So that's that's the if if I have uh, I have a truth, give me uh, give me a model, give me a prior. And tell me what truth you are learning. Um, I can define this k function, right? That determines the the, the, the geometry. Um, and this is the zeta function. This expression here is a zeta function for this learning problem. Okay. The core observation is that we can um, uh, we can so we have we have these relationships here, and Mayling and Laplace transform are invertible. And zeta functions are really easy to evaluate because of resolution of singularity. That's SLT low three. John Tien's uh, go through the algebraic version of things where you do blowouts, and then um, after a while you find that everything uh, everything looks like um, u to the k, right? Everything is in normal crossing, right? And as we will see, that's a really easy integral to do, right? Um, before that, a uh, little bit of digression, because I anticipate people will um, ask that. Um, this is uh, this is my best attempt at giving some intuition on what this um, density of states um, or um, what this direct this, this delta distribution thing is doing um, here, right? So uh, so a lot of us know, and lots of a lot of us have touched on a lot of physics today that we know the Dirac delta 
distribution. Okay, that, 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 that is a technical word, that distribution. But you also know that it's a generalized um, function. What that means is that the core observation is that if we relax our requirement on what we want a function to do, namely, if we say that, okay, functions can do a lot of things. The, the, the main thing they can do is actually evaluate on the point, right? Give me a function f, I can ask what is f at three. Um, the other thing I can do for, with, with a function is integrate it against other functions, right? If I have a function um, phi, uh, 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 if I have a function f, I can integrate, um, and then if you give me another function, um, another function, I can integrate that and give uh, and, and get an, a, a, a number to, to get a number, right? Okay, so uh, the idea is that if we want, we, we can generalize functions by saying, we don't need to evaluate them. We just want the being able to integrate against other function property. Then we get a set of, a, a, a large, larger set of functions that is called generalized function. Okay, that's just a generalization. But the nice thing about them is that, um, is that all of them, um, all of them can be approximated by normal function in the limit, right? So uh, you, you might have um, seen the, the, whoops, the Dirac delta being um, sort of successive sharper and sharper. Um, Gaussian distribution. So that, that is saying that, okay, you want to evaluate uh, the Dirac delta distribution integrating against something else. You integrate it against uh, a, a normal distribution and, and take the limit as the normal, normal distribution, distribution becomes infinitely sharp. Right? So, um, okay. And, and then that gives you um, a Dirac delta distribution that has, um, that has, that is sort of characterized by this property, right? If you integrate against that, you get, um, you get evaluation at zero, right? That is, so in, in, in mathematics, um, in function analysis, that is, uh, that is kind of a physicist way of writing. That is, uh, there is a functional, there is a, uh, there's a linear functional called it T, such that it's a, it's a function that takes in other function, well, for like the, the integrate things against function that takes in other function, we call that, uh, let me use a different fee, takes in another function and then output, uh, output a real number. And it is linear. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a linear functional on the space of test function, test function being things you integrate things against, right? Okay. Um, now we can have family of distributions family of such linear fun functions. So this is, so, um, so uh, think of this index by T as physicist notation for there exists uh, a family of distribution, this kind of, the, the kind of thing that consume function and spits out number um, such that their action on test function looks like evaluation on T, right? That's what, this identity will mean. Okay. Now that we have family of distribution, we can, we can, can we? So we can, we have parameterized family of distribution. Can we do calculus on them? Right. And the answer is that uh, nice property where each such generated function actually comes from uh, uh, successive um, approximation of nice function uh, sort of defines the topology with this such that integration um, means this identity. So let me explain. What that means is that, okay, we have, we have a family of um, distributions. We want to ask, what is this thing, right? You, you integrate this against, uh, in, integrate out T, you should, you should get back another distribution. What distribution is that? Well, a distribution is something that consume a test function. We just need to know what the action on the test function is. And the action of the test function is you act the thing, the, the, the family of uh, each individual part, each individual member of that family against that test function 
and then you do the integration afterwards. That's what that's what in, um, that is the action that defines this as a distribution. Okay. Um, okay. In particular, let's let's talk about this um, this distribution, right? Um, there's a there's a physicist notation buried in there, right? What that means is that I want to know what is the action of this distribution acting on a test function. Okay, so the first thing you do is that, okay, look at what, give me one member of that family, or oh, this is one member, uh, this is one of the member, what is its action on the test function? Well, it's evaluating it at T, and then we integrate it. So, so this should be um, T, phi of T dt, but you can recommend a trace and uh, make it X. Okay, so um, all of that is to, is to make this theorem uh, not so mysterious. This is theorem 4.4 in the gray book. Um, this is saying that if you have a differentiable, a continuously differentiable real function from R to the D, so little f, um, then we define something called the density of states, um, V of T, what, what, what is it? It's a distribution, right? Um, the, the, the role of distribution is to be integrated against, right? It's not a, uh, it's not a function, right? It's, it's, it's to be integrated against. Um, it is defined to be uh, the integral of this family of distribution. Okay, uh, that's a typo. And, and we have the theorem that if you give me any locally integrable, integrable function, f, its action, um, uh, if, if, uh, if you act on it, um, uh, act on it, act on that integrable function and then integrate out t, you, 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 you just get this expression, which is just evaluating that locally integrable function at the center of the Dirac, uh, Dirac delta distribution, right? For, for, forget phi, forget phi, right. okay? So um, it's like, it's like, um, it's like asking about um, what is uh, uh, what 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 is it like near a level set um, of f? Wait. The level set at level t. Yeah. Should the, should the second integral be over all of r? Uh, should the second integral be over all yep. of r d? Thank okay. you. Great. That's a great catch. Uh, great catch. I need a list of errata, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, in learning theory we have this density of state function where the relevant thing is K, right? We are, we are talking about the level sets of K and the most important level set is the zero level set. So we, are we, we want to know about the density of states as T goes to zero, right? Okay, and here, here comes the, um, the, the core observation, which is if you Laplace transform this thing, okay, there is a separate thing to handle which is Laplace, trans Laplace and Mellin transform of distribution, but so trust me, it works. <laughs> so if you Laplace transform this distribution, so let's 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 apply apply the the the, the formula up there. So uh, I want to evaluate. So this is Laplace uh, Laplace transform, right? Uh, zero to infinity. Um, okay, you um, you then it 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 it, it turns this into evaluate this function at the center, at the point where the delta function concentrate, right? It's not a point, it's, it's an entire level set. This is a difference between, um, that, that's the part where you actually need to be careful. But, um, um, so Watanabe, uh, great book, um, chapter four, those are the gory details. Okay, so you evaluate, so you substitute T, uh, k k into t, you get that. Um, so and then and don't 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 forget the phi there, and then you get exactly the integral that we were talking about last time, right? That's the z bar integral. I'm still talking about k, no stochasticity yet, okay? And if you do the same thing for the mailing transform, you substitute the t to the z in the mailing transform with um, k of w, um, then you that that exactly the the zeta function that we're talking about. 
Okay. Okay. Um, hopefully that's. Um, if you if you think that's not well motivated, I understand. <laughs> yes. For milling and clapper transform. Yeah, for yeah, everything, the velocity stays stays in the temperature. Yeah. Uh, it's like why why would one think about this? I try to I try to uh uh I try to construct an argument for for answering this over the past few days, but the best I can get give give is that this is not an unknown. <laughs> um uh this so people have been uh using mailing transform to to study asymptotics. Um, asymptotics of of uh, of integrals uh, like that, um, in, in some other context, right? Not not learning theory context. Um, very very direct relationship between asymptotic expansion. Oh. Yeah, that would take some time. The very direct correspondence between asymptotic expansions and poles, and that would take some time to explain. So, but once once you once you grok that, then it's obvious you want to melon transform. Yes, yeah. it takes you from one to the other, but it's after you have to first get correspondence between asymptotic expansions and poles. So I could give a short lecture next week. People are interested. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The the uh, obviously zeta function is inspired by the, the name is inspired by the Riemann zeta function, and it's actually ha it has a lot of the same feature, and then you sort of analyze it in sort of a similar way, like the um uh I, I think I vaguely remember sort of the, the, the mailing transform of the Riemann zeta function is how you would the 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 infinite series expression is how you will analytically con continue it um to other places, right? And and then you get a different expression of the Riemann zeta function where you have some other kind other information, for example, asymptotic uh, asymptotic uh, information in some other places. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, sorry, I. One question I have here is so I understand the definition there, but mm -hmm. like, um, you you've called this V thing the density of states, yeah. which I guess is meant to evoke something like there are states and that's the density of them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Can, that's kind of exactly like in, this is this comes directly from physics. It's the state in physics and it's the density mm -hmm. of. Uh, states at a certain energy level, amount of states that have certain energy level. Okay. Um, oh, okay. and, and now we that I stare at it, it makes more sense. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. The picture is to imagine a water level rising on a landscape. As the water level passes through non degenerate critical points, like it picks up whatever new volume is associated to the growth of that ellipsoid but if it pass if the water level passes through a singular level set then the new amount of volume that's picked up is like in some sense infinite not quite because you have a compact space and a prior but the diverse the density of states diverges as you raise the water level the energies that are accessible past critical points um, let me try to draw that so Imagine you have a donut and this is the ground and you, you start raising the water level, say the water level is here. If you raise that, so this, that, that, this is T, right? And, and, the, and the height function is, yeah, the height function, the uh, height function is our K, I think. So if you, if you, if you, if you say that, let, let, me, let me investigate um, uh, the, the rate of change of volume as this water level goes from T to T plus delta T. So that's, I raise the water level a little bit. How much does, does the volume change? Well, it changed that much, right? Okay, and, and the, the, these, are, these are regular points. But if my water level was here, um, then if I raise the water level a little bit, then suddenly that change is, um, the, well, the entire topology change, the, the topology of that field volume change, and the rate of change of that, um, the rate of change of that, that, that volume is the density of states, right? It's, it's like the, the density of the number of the volume between T and T and delta T is um, as delta T go to zero, right? That's, that's the amount of stuff between this other level. Um, and then at critical points, um, that change is 
no longer no longer smooth then so so this I, I think these are not degenerate right sorry yes. this one is not degenerate yeah right so this one is actually more so this water raising trick it's okay pinch one of the things uh, how do I pinch this one how do I do that just do a uh yeah yeah so oh right so you're saying that pinch this pinch this yeah okay <laughs> yeah yeah okay. so that's that's again a topology change um the level set would change topology i i, I don't really see that it diverges um like it just like i think derivative the derivative the derivative of something yeah, that's not okay. continu no longer okay. continuous but not itself right yeah not itself not, not the volume thing itself it's the rate of change yeah 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 the number of states. yeah maybe for other people following along this, this water level raising trick is very general it's called sort of goes by most name morse theory yeah um yeah just if yeah. you want to look that up the Morse lemma and Morse lemma is yeah. in in this general. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. It seems like I, I could only have time to go through level one and two. Not really the top. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, we are climbing. Um. So we have done. We have done this. This is done. We are, we are going to level one, okay? Um, level one is the case where, um, it's a case like last time where we have sort of like X, so uh, sorry, uh, in this lecture, I'm going to use, uh, instead of Ws, I'm going to use X squared and Y squares. Um, and because I want to distinguish, I, was, I want to distinguish X, which do contribute and Y, which don't contribute, and you will see Y later. So here the, in the first level, it's all Xs, and that means that all of them have kind of the same same amount of flatness, like like the uh, like the uh, uh, example last time. And I don't mean flatness in the sense of curvature. No curvature here, right? Flatness in the sense of like this is more flat than this is more flat than that. Okay. All right. Okay. Step one of the recipe. Compute the zeta function, right? Okay, uh, let me actually define what this case is first. So this case, your k has, uh, has the following form. And I should say it has the following form after resolution of singularity, right? And it's resolution of singularity tells you that you can always get this form. So has this form, um, some constant a, x to the 2k. Okay, I'm using something called multi-index notation here, uh, because that means that oh, A is still the constant. That means X1 to the 2K1 multiplied by X2 to the 2K2 dot 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 X M to the 2K M. I'm using consistent notation. M is going to be the multi multiplicity later, okay? Okay, and then our, um, uh, let's say our B, our, it's not quite prior, it's prior together with the change of coordinates, but um, we're just doing integrals here. So it's x to the h. Again, that means x1 to the h1 dot 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 x m to the h m. These are this, so these are monomials. Okay, these are monomials. Okay. Okay, so what do I mean by all the x's have equal contribution? I mean those k's, right? Those exponent k equal to um, k1 dot 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 km and h equal to h1 dot 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 km has all of them. If you do h, um, if you if you look if you look at h1 plus one over two k1, it's equal to Lambda, so suggestive notation, lambda is going to be the RLCT. And all of them, all of them 
equal to a lambda. Right? So if you recall uh, 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 last time, we, do we did this integral, x to the 2k, just, just in one dimension. And that is, uh, that is n to the 1 on 2k. Uh, gamma of one on two k plus one or something like that, right? Uh, uh, don't hold me to that, but it's it it has it has um, n to the negative um, one over two k in that, and that's that's the RLCT that we 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 the learning coefficient in this degenerate case um, before, right? So so um, these these are sort of uh, measuring how degenerate they are, and they are sort of equally degenerate in all these. Um, uh, coordinates. Okay, um, so we wish to compute our z bar n here is um, looks like, um, so I'm going to integrate um, just between zero and, one, uh, zero and one. You can always um, sort of stretch this by looking at how close you want to, 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 the, to the zero set, but I'm just, because otherwise it's going to be. So, so sorry. Yeah. Just a small question. Is it is my understanding correct that we use the blow up to put it in normal crossing crossing um, form and then the you somehow have an argument that kx and phi x have this form where you you these ratios are always equal to lambda. Is that right? No, no. this is the first level. Uh, this this is just the first level where the, where the main features are. I will show you where the uh, resolution of singularity comes in and what's the most general form later. Here, I'm, in, I'm assuming that um, all my coordinates satisfy this. I'm oh, assuming okay, that. that's an assumption. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I'm assuming this. These are assumptions, right? This is level one. Okay. And yeah. Are you assuming that um, the dimension of X is M? M yeah. Which also happens to be multiples. Yeah. So, the, so this is not a learning machine. This is just an integral, mm -hmm. right? This is an integral that we can do, and it's going to be related to the partition function integral later. Okay, so um, so I don't think. Um, I hope this is okay. Okay, so the zeta function is equal to k that k z d of x dx okay sub, sub, substitute things in um, and x all the x's are uh, integrate 0 1 m so um, so what is this this is x1 to the 2k 1 z x2 to the 2k 2 z dot 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 x m to the 2k m z and then there is there is the h h's as well right there's the, the x to the h uh things so i can uh so plus h1 plus h2 plus hm right and then this is uh the x1 but by the way I, I write this by 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 that notation i mean the x1 the x2 dot 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 the xm and this is what, what we mean by this is an easy integral to do. They factorize. Uh, I forgot an A, <laughs> A to the Z, yeah. Okay, well, I, I should comment. A is a greater than zero, it's a positive uh, number. I only put it in there because later on I'm gonna need it. Um, okay. Um, so, so this is A to the Z and then all the integral factor. So you get M integrals, all of them, looks like this very easy one-dimensional uh, integral. These xj's. And that's um, easy to do. Oh. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the product from j equal to one to m, one over um, two z, Two k z to two z k j plus s j plus one. Okay, I run out of space again. J 
just quickly, Edmund, yep. the domain of integration is that yep. um, I'm is, fixing it at one to simplify it. Yep. But it's not much of an assumption. Yeah. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. put it put it uh, as B, uh, zero to B. Uh, I will comment on. So this is this is basically uh, related to choosing chart domains um, later. I'll comment on that. Cool. Later, if we have time. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of promise that don't quite deliver. <laughs> okay. So this is um, A to the Z. Okay. There is. Um, let me uh, let me do this. Um, I, I will factor out two K um, outside so that. So that this is very clearly um, some kind of pole, right? So that's what I'm going to do. And that amounts to getting um, 2K1 dot 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 um, multiplied all the way up to 2KM and then product of J equal to one. Oh, um, before I write the product, you, our assumption was that those things, HJ plus one over 2KJ, those are lambdas constant, right? So, so aside from these two kJs, um, these are just, this is equal to one over two kJ, um, Z plus lambda, okay? So I don't need, a, don't need a product anymore. This is just equal to one over Z plus lambda all to the power of N, okay? So what does this look like? So this is now, so, so this is, um, yeah, I should have commented before that if you look at the form of this zeta function, just like uh, Dan mentioned before, it's, it's where it's not, sing, not holomorphic, uh, but where, where it's poses that is important. So if you look at this integral, if the real part of z is greater than zero, this is, this is a perfectly fine integral and then there's no, there's no pole, right? For for real part of um, so real part of z um, greater than zero holomorphic, so the zeta function is holomorphic, and and then we kind we, the, the the thing what, what what we have done in this calculation is kind of analytically analytically continue this holomorphic part to the entire uh, complex plane, and found that there is exactly one point the point z equal to negative lambda, where it is, um, it is, it has an order, has an order m pole. And that's the only singularity it has for this theta function. Okay. And uh, this is in case, okay. Okay, now we can go ahead and do step two, which is we, um, so we are, get, we are going from zeta function to density of states um, via inverse mailing transform and then Laplace transform to get to the partition function, right? Okay, so, um, so inverse mailing transform. We, uh, I'm just going to, so we have, we have seen that the mailing transform of the density of states give you the zeta function. So now we are inver inverting that, right? So the inverse, inverse mailing transform of the zeta function evaluated at T, the, the, the variable choice for the um, density of states is, um, is equal to, well, you, you, you look up what the, what the uh, mailing transform inverse mailing transform formula is? It's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a contour integral, some contour um, of of uh, zeta of z um, t to the negative z minus one. I, I think there is some um, there is some convention um, in with that I'm using here, just like Laplace and other kinds have there, there's convention, but as long as, as long as we stick to one, we're good. Okay, so what is this control integral? Uh, let's draw our zeta function um, again. So we have we have a pole at um, negative lambda, and the recipe of inverse mailing transform tells us that you can uh, you the the c contour is any 
any vertical control control that's that's the uh, infinite vertical uh, vertical control and how do you normally do that you do that by um, by looking at sort of partial uh, that's meant to be a which doesn't really matter uh, you look at a so you look at a closed control integral so this is equal to one over two pi i uh, limit as um, a closed control integral goes to infinity. Uh, limit as as r goes to infinity um, of this CR control. So that's uh, a con a closed control with uh, a, a semicircular control with radius r, and the radius have to be greater, just greater than that, because eventually r goes to infinity of um, set up z t to the negative z minus one t. Okay, so what does that look like? So what does this closed control integral look like? Uh, so we have, um, I don't remember the, okay. So from memory, it's a to the z. Um, okay, I'm going to lump all the constant into a single gamma. And then there is um, z plus lambda to the m um, and t to the negative z minus one dt. So that's equal to um, gamma e to the z. So exponent exponentiate. That's, that's a control integral on z. So close control integral. Okay, if you if you don't if I'm not following that, that's fine. I'm just I just just follow the main main steps, main feature, right? Okay, you have this control, and this is a this is a nice uh, meromorphic function, right? You 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 evaluate this by uh, by residue theorem, and there's only one place, and you know the order of the pole. It's an n folder pole. Residue theorem applies. So you can evaluate this this integral, which is equal to, uh, it's equal to um, gamma. So this is just residue theorem. Um, so it's m for the pole. So you differentiate it m time, m m minus one time. Um, uh, Right, and then you evaluate at the pole, right? Okay. Um, hopefully, some of the main features is coming is might be jumping out now. So you differentiate m times is just an exponential. You take the log um, a on t. Oh, it's okay. It's not quite obvious yet, but it's the, the m minus one is there, right? The m minus one in the in the in the formula. Okay, and then you evaluate at negative lambda log a on t, um, which is equal to uh, a on t to the negative lambda. Okay, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So 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 one thing one thing that you need to be careful is that sure this um, this is equal to that. Um, just a moment. This is equal to that. Uh, but how do you know that the, con the contribution of this arc um, goes to zero? Well, uh, it only goes to, uh, so you use Jordan's lemma. Right, Jordan's lemma is, is, the, is the lemma that, that allows you to, to handle, uh, handle situation where you have, uh, you have things like that. You have, uh, you are integrating a contour and then you're integrating over an arc and then you have a function like that. And then it decays. Um, it, the, the, this arc contribute nothing, so that you, you are actually equal to your original integral. If um, this a this 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 thing, so in our case, if this thing is greater than zero, right? So we need it. We need a log a on t to be greater than zero, which means that t have to be smaller than a. Um, but for t greater than a. Well, you just close the contour on the other side, um, and then Jordan's lemma, you know, uh, um, flip the sign of the z um, 
you close the control on the other side and you evaluate the same thing, but there's no calls on the other side. So that's just zero, right? So, so, uh, so this integral is equal to, to this expression um, only when t is less than a, it's equal to zero um, otherwise, right? For, don't, don't forget that t is a um, parameter here. So if once t is greater than, greater than a, you, 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 you look at the mailing transform, um, it's zero. Question. Wait, what is gamma? Uh, I, I, it's, yeah, I sort of very briefly mentioned gamma. So gamma was this whole thing that I don't want to write again. Just, oh, just some constant. I Sorry. see, okay, thanks. Thanks for the question because that, that probably confused a lot of people. Yeah. The red um, A over T to the negative lambda down the bottom, yeah. is that, am I just being stupid or is that missing all the yeah, other that's stuff? A mis that's missing. Uh, there is a one on T missing here. There's a one on T okay. missing here. Yeah. And that's kind of important. Okay. Um, but writing the what you've got in the red just next to it on the right, yeah, isn't that just the exponential bit and yeah, this all is, the sorry, other... this this is just the exponential bit, yeah. Ah, uh, sorry, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. annotating is not this is equal to. I that. was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of yeah. other stuff at <laughs> the front of that, and everything exponential. <laughs> Like explanation, excellent. I'll give Maybe you an example. Say like, oh, it's all like negligible. Yeah, we are bringing t to zero though. That's very not negligible. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's a high level question here. It's a like is... question of why are we doing this? No, no, no. <laughs> like, going back to what is the Mellon transform? Um, maybe how does it compare to the Laplace transform or you know Fourier transform? Oh, uh, so the Mellin transform is, okay, I'm just going to write this formula. So the Mellin transform of a function f of x uh, evaluated at a complex variable z is defined to be um, f of x to the z d, and then you integrate out everything, right? No, 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 completely wrong. <laughs> Uh, t to the z, and then uh, dt, right? So it's it's an integral transform, right? The 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 the, the formula is that it has nice algebraic properties, just like Fourier and Laplace transform, and all this all, 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 all three of these are related if you do some um, uh, change of variable carefully, um, and so on. But they have different sort of domain of applications. Fourier and Laplace transform are. Uh, historically or even now more engineering and science uh, focus mailing transform is um, quite um, mathematics um, focus um, right. I, I, um, they are related there's a deep theory that i can't recall at the moment a question from alex why are we considering sorry can't listen to this. Uh, why are we considering the case where k and phi are monomials with this this h i plus one over two k j Case is constant. Yeah, because, 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 where's my picture? Uh, because we are, <laughs> because I'm assuming that, okay? Uh, this, is, this is the easiest, this is the easiest integral where all the features are illustrated. This is not a learning machine yet. This is just an integral that we can do that will get us to a learning machine, that, that the learning machine, that, that will help us later to look at a learn, learning machine partition function, okay? Okay, probably should emphasize that a lot more. All right, um, last step, um, Laplace transform, okay? Um, okay, not looking at my notes is a mistake. So let me do that. Okay, so Zn, as we saw, was the Laplace transform evaluated at n, right? Laplace transform has a variable and then we just evaluate it at n. So that's e to the negative nt and the density of state um, dt, okay? Um, just because the last time the density of state was so massively written, I'm just going to rewrite it again. And I, I, it's, uh, I'm going to call it a constant c because it's not gonna be important. Um, t to the lambda minus one over a to the lambda log a on t to the n minus one. Okay, 
if t is less than a, uh, less than a and greater than zero, right? In that region only, right? That was important. So this is zero to infinity. Okay, so this is equal to, okay, so it's, it's zero everywhere else. So this is just zero to a now, um, e to the negative n t, um, constant a to the lambda that we don't get, uh, um, t to the lambda minus one, log a on t, n minus one dt. Okay, um, change the variable. Just to clarify the yep. first line, Edmund, you're saying that the partition function is equal to the Laplace transform of the density of states. Thank you. Excellent question. Uh, yes, I'm saying that the normalized Laplace mm -hmm. uh, partition function. I'm using the word partition function here, but again, we are we are the normalized and then no stochasticity stochasticity yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we are at the final stage for this. Um, particular example yes and, and this v thing this is the inverse density melon is, is the inverse melon of the density of states right it's the inverse melon of the zeta function which is the density of states okay okay got it probably worth writing all out um so what is it uh that n is the laplace transform of um, the density of states and um uh, zeta z is, so this is evaluated at n, is the uh, mailing transform of uh, the density of states evaluated at z. Okay, so change of variable, uh, let tall be. Okay, I lost my notes. Where is it? Okay. Okay, so I think I might want to just um okay. This this is the the the, the, the most featureful state. So let me let me let me do this in full. So C on A lambda and it now it goes from zero to N. Um Uh, ooh, I'm missing something here. This is um, nt equal to a tall. Hopefully, if you follow along, it will at least give you some sense of, yes, I can do this myself. <laughs> if a little bit tedious. Um, log on n on tall. And if you're doing it yourself, please check my algebra. Right, this is just a straightforward linear change of variable. Um, and I claim we are almost at home base. Okay, um, what do we have here? We have, um, we have, there's, there's one, there's one, uh, there's one N here. Um, sorry, that, that, that combines with that, we get uh, one on N to the lambda. Um, the A, all cancel. Okay, so we get c n to the lambda. C is just some, some constant um, uh, zero n e to the negative a tall um, tall to the minus one. Okay, so this is a log of n on t, which is log of n minus log of tall. It's just a uh, sum of two terms raised to some power. Binomial expand that right. So that's binomial expansion, j equal to zero to m minus one. So the power of the exponent is m minus one. m minus one, choose j, um, log. So one of them raised to m minus one minus j. The other one, which is negative log tall, raised to, raised to that, or d tall. Okay, stare at that sum. Uh, we are taking n to infinity. The highest order term in that in, in that sum is when j is equal to zero. It's log n to the n minus one, right? Factor all that out. You get um, c log n to the n minus one 
on n to the lambda. Uh, can I just start saying plus junk? Uh, uh, the, okay, so, uh, stuff integral zero to n. Okay, that, that integral is, uh, bears a little bit of um, explanation. So there is some constant, um, e to the negative a tau, um, tau to the lambda minus one. Okay. Uh, okay. This is I. I should. I really shouldn't be doing this. Uh, taking shortcuts. But so this is. Okay. So if you factor out the the, the log n to the n minus one, everything else is something on log n to some power, right? Um, everything else has lower power than n minus one. Okay. So so everything else is starting to decay with n. And then there is this pesky log tall to the j term, um, d tall, right? Okay, so the, this, this, this is an integral. So you get, you get the term that we want times the sum of things with integral that is, there is still an n in here, right? So these n we don't worry about because they are lower order term, right? There is still an n in there and I need to convince you that they, that the, those, this, this, is, this is a constant order thing, right? Well, this thing, this this integral is bounded by since n is um, n is finite number. This integral and everything everything in, inside is um, is okay. The dividend inside is not quite positive because there's a there's a lot depend depending on the sign of j. But you can you can triangle inequality that um, is less than the, the the version where it goes goes from zero to infinity, right? And that is a uh, um, well, that is related to the gamma integral um, with the log uh, modification. So those are, um, I can't do those integral, uh, but you can look up special functions uh, for those. So those are numbers, right? Those are numbers. Um, and then it is greater than the version where you goes from zero to one only, right? N is number, so it's greater than one. So, um, okay, so what, <laughs> so, so where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Right? We have Zn is less than a bunch of really complicated junk. It's not junk, but um, multiplied by this thing. And we have upper and lower bounded that, right? And, and some, some other constant um, times the same uh, log n on log n to the n minus one over n to the lambda factor. Okay? If you take the negative log of both sides, you well log is monotonic negative log just flip everything so you get your free energy is upper and lower bounded by it's upper and lower bounded by terms like that right so you can see this is uh, this is where the lambda come from it's negative log of you know n to the negative lambda so uh, negative cancel is lambda log n uh, this is where the log log n term come from and that's why m is the multiplicity, multiplicity right okay so we got here and I only have 15 minutes to go through all the other levels. <laughs> so I'm going to not do the calculation, but just point out um, major features. Okay, question. Yeah, uh, so you might not want to go into this, but um, if I go back one slide, like we had this sum of like, you know, uh, these n minus one choose j and then like one over log n to the power of j yeah. times something which like I'm now persuaded is like roughly constant ish. Yeah. Um, it's upper and lower bounded by constants. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if I look at like one over log n to the j, yeah. like at biggest j is n minus one. Like, like, yeah. like why, why doesn't that cancel out the log n to the n, n minus one? Um, uh, the, 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 wait. No, so so this this is decaying. That is growing. Um, okay, so if you take the log of the, this entire expression, so you get you get what we what we got from that, hmm. right? And and so we are talking about the log of this expression, right? Okay, so what? it's it's a log of an expression that is decaying in m. D decaying in m. N. N. Little n. Yeah. Oh, sure, but like. Why can't I divide the log n to the m minus one 
by the one over log n to the m minus one, that's like the final term of that sum and just get something without any log n's. That's my question. Sure, you, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the highest order term, right? It's log, it's, it's, it's log n to the m minus one divided by log n to the m minus one, which is okay. a constant. All right. Right? It's not growing anymore. Oh, okay. Right? So the... It's a convenient way of getting by sort of, yeah. sort of factor it up. Just say, well, it's okay. It's just a... Oh, I, yeah. see what, I see what you mean. Right. So, so you... Yeah, there's the order one, and then there's like j equals minus two and minus two, and then right. like everything else is just not dot, 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 like dot. it's just lower order. That's the low highest order term. Oh, okay, right. got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I I'm glad people are engaged in an actual calculation. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so I yeah. question there, Edmund, on the last slide that you had. Mm just going from the bound to the next statement there. Yeah. Um, how to think about that. So you Is get- the constants, are they involved in the O1 term? Yeah, so you get F of N is log, so I'm just calling call all that there, plus C, plus log, okay, less than equal to, so it's, you flip, right? This is mm -hmm. C point, so minus or whatever. And then you get, uh, same thing minus log C prime, which is constant, right? Log of constant is constant. Okay. That's the O1 thing. Okay. Um, okay. Main features only. Question. Sorry. So the next step. Uh, yeah. Question. Yeah. So I'm still very confused about like what we were even oh, just trying um, to accomplish try. with this. The, with this, so I thought we were talking about the situation where um, the loss function was Morse, but doesn't that mean that um, the um, wait, hold on. Okay, so let me. How am I going to do this? Okay, Alex, is this just the same question you had in your comment? Uh, yeah, I just realized the question I asked in chat was actually very confused as well. Uh, never mind. Okay. Maybe we can come to the, come back to this in a second. How back to this? Let's, let's, yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's put questions. Um, people who don't want lunch can um, ask questions after this. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, so the next level is so we have we we have we 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 com we completed this level. Now the next level is just so what if what if not all of them have uh, what if we don't have all of them equal uh, have h j plus one over two k j equal to lambda, but the the uh, so uh, what happens is this if your other variables um, have h um, l plus one over two KL uh, being greater than lambda, then you don't matter, right? So what, what this translates to in visual intuition, uh, which is not good in two dimensions, but um, what this translates to is if you have, so this is W1 square and W2 to the six, right? We say the six is the flatter um, uh, situation. So uh, what is W2? Um, yeah, so uh, W2 is in this direction, so it's, it's very flat in that direction, right? And if you raise, um, if you e to the negative n w1 square w2 to the six here and take n to be really large, you see that as n get very, very large, like it's, it's, the, it's the flatter one that is contributing all the volumes. That, that dimension just doesn't matter, right? That's kind of the visual intuition of what the lambda, let's, let's call this lambda, Lambda L's, right? Those that is the so you, you have you have all these quantities h one plus one over h k one uh, dot 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 to let's arrange them so that they are in increasing order and the first m of them are all equal to lambda the the, the least one and then you start to get this is this is lambda one all the way up to lambda m lambda m plus one all the way up to your actual dimension of your model. Lambda d, right? So these are arranged in increasing order. All the one, except the least one, the least lambda, doesn't matter, right? They don't matter. And 
calculation that we don't we don't want to do right now. Okay, some bounds, some bounds, right? Some bounds. Okay, breathing through that. Um, so done this. Okay, now we are going up to the next level, and 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 finally, finally we move away from the geometry world, and and we are not now talking about the stochastic world. Very quickly, we want to go from talking about k, the deterministic k, and the corresponding um, integral that we have talk, been talking about for the last few lectures, um, and negative negative log that to these quantities, right? So, so uh, as, as, as Liam pointed out before, like we, we, have, we have K of W looking nice and smooth, but then, but then if, you, if you draw a particular data set um, and then evaluate the K and for the data set, you might have fluctuation, right? Draw another one, it looks different again, and so on and so forth, right? So it's fluctuating depending on what data set you're drawing, okay? How do we, how, so the, the, the question is, how, how does KN, fluctuate around its mean. We do know that if you take the expectation over all possible data set, then the mean is actually Kn, right? So law of large number does say that in the large end limit, you converge to, 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 to you are very close to your mean. Kn is close to Kw. But if like no matter how large n is, you still fluctuate. And then we want to know whether or not that fluctuation change our asymptotics. That, that is an uh, important question, right? Okay, there, there is a kind of a partial answer. Um, uh, this is, this is um, a lousy answer. The partial answer is for every fix, fix W, as long as you are away from K of W equal to zero, then central limit theorem tells you, um, you th what, what does that mean? That means that KN, so W is fixed, right? If you draw another sample, you get another K for that fixed W. This is just a random variable. So then, and, and if you have finite mean and variance, then central limit theorem just tells you that this is central limit theorem for fixed um, W, right? Um, and that's the, that's the variance the center, central limit theorem tells you. Not good enough, right? Um, you can strengthen this um, with a lot of technical work um, so that this convergence is not point-wise convergence. It's actually convergence in function space. Uh, this um, roughly kind of a functional version of our central limit theorem, okay? Um, so, so, that, so that this quantity um, converges as a Gaussian process. So before we were looking at, before we were looking at, okay, you, you so let, for example, this is the W axis. You draw a data point. We, we are looking at a fixed W. You draw a data point, it lands here. You draw a data point, it lands there. You draw a data point, it lands there, there, there. So you know that these that these data points concentrate around the, the mean there for every one of these uh, vertical lines. But then this is saying that uh, you can actually say that you 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 draw a, a set of data, you get a function, right? K K on W is a function. Draw another set of data, you draw you draw a set of data of size n, you get another function, and another function, and another function. So um, in function space, where, where where is the mean of this function and what's the what's the fluctuation around it? Um, okay, that's 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 the intuition I want to uh, want to say. But this is uh, not great because we don't care about things away from the zero set. Our, our good solution is precisely where the, the energy is lowest, hence k is zero, right? In that case, well, you can't even evaluate that um, evaluate the central limit theorem there. The the the, the variance is zero. Um, so it's a singular distribution, thing like that, right? And uh, the, the function space uh, situation is even worse. Um, so um, here's where the resolution theorem comes in. Um, so uh, I think John Tien has um, shown you this. This is the resolution theorem. If you, if you have a function, uh, there is, there's, this is a very deep theorem such so that you can find a, Resolution map a uh, 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 a a birational a uh, 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 real analytic proper map that is sort of uh, sort of uh, uh, isomorphism away from the singular singular sets, um, so that your functions looks like that. And why do we want that? The reason we want that is this theorem, which is one of the first theorem in SLT. This is main formula one 
in the gray book, um, which is saying that it's 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 a lot like um, you can express you can express sine of z as um, as z times sine z on z, and you can show that this is actually continuous at zero. And not, so so what, what what happens here is that you 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 have you have um, found out that uh, sure sine z sine z is zero at zero, but the order of vanishing is one, and the, and and how it behaves. Um, Aside from going to zero, so there's you separate out the behavior where it goes to zero and the behavior um, uh, other than that, right? So uh, what this uh, what resolution allows us to do is to do this for uh, for our kn function. So this is previously our k function. You hit it with resolution singularity. That is the the, the function you resolve. Um, uh, you actually simultaneously resolve the, the prior as well. Uh, you resolve that you get you you get it into normal crossing, and then you can use that to prove that um, to prove that this thing, this this fluctuation around the mean, right? Central limit theorem tells us how that fluctuate. So there's a always there is always a root n scaling term. Central limit te theorem tells us how how that fluctuate, but then uh, uh, near near the zero set of this this the the um, it's it's Variance goes to zero. We in this high dimensional space with singularity resolution of the resolution of singularity allows us to factor out factor out um, the how it goes to zero and the rest of the behavior. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to state this. So the difference between k n. So this is u to the two k. This is k. Right. That's the resolved version of k. So so if I rewrite this. This is not well behaved in the neighborhood of the zero set, but this is kn g of u minus kn. So after resolution, that's the g of u thing. So this is equal to u to the k uh, cn of u, where cn is now actually a Gaussian process. Well, it converged to a Gaussian process um, everywhere in 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 the in that uh, in in the in the reparametrized space, right? And, um, and the, the, the reason that is possible is because we have like sort of factor out the zeros um, of it. Okay, so, 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 so we, um, final thing. So before we have e to the negative n k, we were talking about this. Now we want to talk about this. But the difference between the, the, those, those two is just a term that look like that, okay? And here are some cauchy schwarz inequality and stuff that says that it, it will obviously modify the, uh, the, the, the value of the integral, but it doesn't affect the main order term, okay? Um, and you can look at the detail, de details here of how it doesn't affect, right? Okay. Can I get five more minutes? Okay, okay, okay. Last last level. We are we are, we are here. Okay, last level. Okay. So if you remember John Tian's lecture, uh, uh, two days, <laughs> uh, SLT low three, right? If you remember that blowing up, that's that's how we resolve singularity in the uh, 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 that's just how we resolve singularity. Right, you 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 have some you have you have some function that you want to eventually get to normal crossing. You 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 make a plot, you make a blow up. Remember that sort of um, you your original space. You blow up, and then in the blow up you have multiple charts. Um, that was two dimensions, so you have like p one, so you have covered by two charts. This is hundred billion dimensions, right? Okay, so lots of charts if you use that blow up. But so you have you have charts. So some some of them some of them are already in normal crossing. Some of them are not. You blow that up again. And then some of them are good, some of them are not. You blow that up again, right? Which means that uh, in, in the end, your, 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 your U space, the, the reparametrized space where it is actually normal crossing, consists of this patch of coordinate, that patch of coordinate, just, just all the leaf node, right? Right. So there are multiple patches where things are normal crossing, right? So all the calculations we've done before are in local coordinates where there are, lo are, are normal crossing. Right, the the um, 
right? So we, we were just looking at one chart and then do the, do the computation there. Okay, so we need to apply the same calculation to every chart, except we only care about a chart if it contributes to the main order term, right? So in every chart, you have, you have a different u to, the k, u to the 2k and different u to, uh, u to the h, right? And those define different, different lambdas and different m's. The only contribution to the main order term is, are those where this term is the largest, right? So those, chart, those patches of charts where this that contributes to the main order um, term is it, known as the essential charts. Okay. So, um, so what you do is that the actual integral, now this is the actual part, okay, no bars here. Oh, no, no sorry, that there's actually bars. So we're talking about K. Okay. Um, the actual partition uh, function integral is a sum over all charts, right? It's a sum over all charts where these individual charts are the calculation that we've done before together with the uh, uh, non unimportant coordinates and add in the noise terms, et cetera, right? And in each, each, each one, each of those charts, noise term only contribute to uh, uh, constant order term and lower. And um, yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I've got a very obvious question, which is you uh, you glue some charts. Yep. So I presume you shouldn't overcount. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. So so uh, this thing here is a partition of unity. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, just a just a note on notation. Um, these the charts are labeled by alphas. I'm dropping a ton of alpha in here. Everything that depends on charts have an alpha alpha. Right. Okay. Attached. Yeah. Okay. Sure. We have arrived. <laughs> I hope you feel like that. Um, uh, just one point. What was it? just a, a few important points, which is um, we didn't just derive asymptotics. We derived bounds, right? This is a bound that 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 works for all m, right? Um, and there are, there are lots of other, other things we, did, we, we didn't talk about. We didn't talk about how that, that, that CM thing fluctuates. Uh, we didn't talk about that effects on MLE. Um, and quite importantly for Dan's uh, lecture or even previous discussion on phase transition, we are talking about large end limit when we, when we look at it, when we actually look at it asymptotic, right? Um, that means that we are looking at a global, global minimum, just the, 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 the global one. There are some other places where the similar calculation applies, but it's like the it, it, it the main order term is just not not enough for, for it to be uh, uh, important. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, stop that. Thank you. Question for those who don't want lunch. Yes. yes. It's such an amazing theorem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what, uh, I, I, I think, shall, shall we mention something about the, um, the, 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 the first observation being the, the, uh, the, the Zeta, the domain strategy. And then I, I think that the, uh, he mentioned something about Watanabe um, uh, needed a lot of the, the, the noise part and things <laughs> were, were pretty hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So main formula one like are you able to speak in high level terms as to what goes into dealing with the empirical process part of it um is there a lot of work that goes into that aspect of it um i i don't know like the proof in chapter six gray book is um is not the main thickness enhancing part of that chapter. Um, but I, it's, there are some, there's, there's an entire chapter before that that talks about empirical process um, theory, when you can talk about things converging, when, wh how, 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 when can we say that um, the, 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 the empirical process, the, the stochastic function actually converged to something governed by a Gaussian uh, law. Um, uh, those are pretty hard, and and a lot of the conditions. I, another thing that I didn't talk about is the condition that goes into these these theorems, <laughs> right? I, I assume a lot of some things are these things are smooth. I can do integrals. Uh, the that that um, that integral being 
uh, that integral being uh, a, a finite sum is, is uh, a consequence of compactness. You can relax that somehow um, and so on and so forth. And then there are a lot of conditions um, that goes into um, uh, that goes into ensuring that those empirical processes converge. Right. Yeah. Um, so yes, I, I guess my answer ends up to be yes, there's a lot of work. Yeah. What's it central? I think once you've assembled all the pieces, like it's it's relatively standard stuff you need, but you need to know a lot of mathematics to see to fit together all these pieces. <laughs> right. The, the, those pieces were found so, by Watanabe, right? Yeah, right? Fitting them together was so he had to tedious. figure out that he needed resolution. He needed, you know, he had a strong background in empirical processes already, but oh. you, I think. I mean, if you read the great book from beginning to end, it, it sort of all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, I don't think there's a single point where some real genius idea happens, at least as far as I can tell. Um, it's the kind of the formulation and it's putting together. Yeah, it's just knowing to apply machines from many different parts of mathematics. Yeah. Which very few people know all of. Uh, yeah, I guess to just observation is a lot of people are scared about the sort of algebraic geometry that goes mm. in in here but in, in classical slt it seems only a very pre sort of algebraic geometry just <laughs> a resolution of singularities goes in and mostly blow-ups the main the main content seems to be this this sort of magic uh magicry with with resolution integral oh, transforms right, and, right. and and these 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 integrals yeah i um yeah you, i would disagree saying... with that or mm. that's my impression uh, sorry sorry audience for dropping you i mean that's that's like a standard toolkit I, I yeah would, i would say that i mean yeah there's no hard algebraic geometry here if you black box the resolution theorem and the blow up part is you don't even need to know how to do that to mm. follow the proof of the free energy right. formula right that's only if you want to compute something. That's a different problem. The, the parts that are non-trivial in going through this proof are the empirical process parts. So that's that's the body of knowledge that you should be afraid of if you right. want to be afraid yeah. of something. My understanding of that we're trying to do is actually um, leverage the resolution theorem to get ideas about physics and algebraic geometry. Building on. Yeah, we would certainly like to make use of more algebraic geometry. Yeah, yeah. This is a kind of a high-level theorem that tells you um, what's important, right? But it doesn't tell you in individual uh, learning machine. Uh, it doesn't tell you in, in the individual learning machine what the RLCT are and what's the, uh, what other things, what other geometric effects um, they are. Did we actually ever get to the case where K is in a mono monomial? Where do, oh, do we uh, 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 so that's that's the point of um, this last slide, right? Uh, where are we? Okay, so this slide, right? So th that's the point of this slide where, okay, if you apply resolution or singularity, that's G of U, um, then, um, okay, let me not. So if you apply resolution or singularity, your K in individual charts becomes a monomial, right? That's, the, that's, that's, that's where algebraic geometry got injected into learning theory, right? And then you can use that fact to prove that um, you prove a standard form for the noise, the, 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 the stochastic version of this to be, to be equal to something else. And then in each individual chart of the resolution, um, uh, so the resolution is, is a reparameterization from, uh, from your uh, uh, down down to your original parameter space, right? But in each each patch of this new manifold, uh, this is monomial, and 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 uh, and that is monomial. Right. Okay, so <laughs> everything after this, I didn't actually go into the calculation detail. Everything here, we did. Okay. So can you sketch out specifically, Other like, um, or follow up on this question? Can you? Um, Sketch out like how um, you would be trying to um, use resolution of singularities to help with okay. like the uh, simple we, case Dan like x one squared plus x two squared for k. Well, I would just like to say thanks. 
Stone, could you put on audio for Alex's question? Yeah, someone put on. Okay. Uh, yeah, can you um, explain how you would use this ring resolution of singularities technique to help with like the specific, like simple case, like x squared one plus, or sorry, k equals x one squared plus x two squared, and say phi is constant? Sorry, so your question, sorry, feedback. So your, your question, yep, your question is that um, uh, we should be able to do all the nitty gritty details of SLT in singular models where, where, where the K function is a uh, low order polynomial, right? That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Take a bit long for it and then just it down. So bring it with a bit long for it and just go through that now. But if you plug together this lecture with John TS, I think that is. Yes. Yeah, you should be able to uh, calculate uh, all the RLCT and find out where where the post right. So you can uh, with John Tian's lecture, you should be able to find out where the posterior mass would concentrate in the resolved space of that um, uh, of that particular polynomial for models with uh, k function being that polynomial. Okay. Yeah. Um, if one was to go through the whole gray book and the whole proof of this, are there any particular points at which seeing the full proof would provide some like really amazing insight for doing other things in SLT or is a lot of it simply machinery and stuff? I don't know. No. Like, <laughs> so yeah, that's Dan's no, answer. Huh? So no royal roads to run. Is that <laughs> somebody in trouble? <laughs> and it's there's, there's even less of a there's no road needing to uh, to to assemble all this right, which is why this is an amazing theory. Mm -hmm. Um, but but um, I, I will say so. If you so sorry, that's a that's kind of a negative answer. But um, for for people who want to go through the gray book, um, uh, you uh, I would say that um, do it on simple examples where all the all, all the uh, all the simple uh, all the assumption is met. Right? You uh, uh, you don't need to worry about the emp empirical processes. Uh, weirdness, measure theoretic weirdness um, and stuff like that. Just, just those push on ahead and come back to see where, where in your already, uh, already finished proof, where that breaks, right? That would be my advice. Yeah. Yes, that was probably a better formulation of the question is like to direct attention for people that might be interested in going to the gray book. Yeah. What are maybe the, the key parts to investigate? Yeah. Because the gray book itself is big. <laughs> it's big. And also I just this is half of the break book. Like there's two more theorems I didn't mention. Two more main theorems. <laughs> there's more than two theorems. <laughs> okay. Maybe 